What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Coach Plugged In channel, where I give you the tips and tools on how to stay plugged into your tech here in 2020 and beyond. So Apple just came out with iPad OS 14 and iOS 14, new watches and two new iPads. So today I'm gonna to be giving you three categories of my favorite tips for turning your iPad Pro into your everyday laptop computer. Also, if there's any part of this video that you would like for me to go in more detail, just leave a comment below and I will get right to that because this right here is gonna be more of a broad way that you can use your iPad Pro as a laptop, but I can go into more detail of how I specifically do it myself. So with that being said, let's plug in. So category number one is accessories. The number one accessory that you're gonna need in order to make your iPad Pro into a laptop is going to be a keyboard case that has a trackpad. Now, obviously you've seen me review the Logitech keyboard and that will be linked right here, but also the Apple Magic Keyboard is probably the best one that you can get for your iPad Pro. Now, the ability to have this Apple Magic Keyboard on your iPad Pro gives you that laptop feel with the way the case works it also gives you an extra USB-C port that is for charging only, but it adds another USB-C port to your iPad Pro itself. Now, using the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro and putting it in that laptop perspective, it allows you to type and use your trackpad as if you were on any other laptop at any given time. The second and best thing that you have to have for almost any computer now, especially from Apple, is a dongle. Now, there are a lot of dongles that I have used and I will link some of those below. The one I am currently using is the 12 South State Go that gives me three USB-A ports, an Ethernet port, USB-C pass-through, HDMI, so if I wanted to plug it up to an external monitor, and my SD card slots. This right here gives your iPad Pro more power to do the things that you need to do if you're looking to use it as a laptop now if you're thinking about apple's laptop options all of them are going to need a dongle in some way shape or form anyway so having that dongle for your ipad pro is even more accessible now because now you can use it the same way you would have to use it if you had a laptop and thirdly this is not something that you would actually need but this is something if you wanted to take your ipad to the next level you could and that is a wireless mouse now using the trackpad is great but having a wireless mouse also gives you that other feeling of hey i I can plug this up to an external monitor and even also having an external keyboard but having that plugged up to an external monitor you don't have to use that small trackpad that comes on the ipad pro magic keyboard case but having that mouse allows you to do a little more things. Now, if you're looking to do video editing with your iPad Pro and you wanna also have a mouse, then I would opt for having the Apple Magic Mouse because you can have all of the swipe gestures using that Magic Mouse. Now, personally, I use an MX Master 2S, but I have shown you on my channel that I did frequently use an Apple Magic Mouse, but I have since then gotten rid of it because I really do like the trackpad on the Apple Magic keyboard case. Moving into our second category, it is about applications. Now the first application is probably gonna come to a surprise to you because it is the one that is definitely a standard application on the Apple iPad Pro. Now people would ask you, why would I think that Safari is the number one application for me as I am trying to turn this iPad into a laptop, and it's because some of the applications on the iPad are not quite ready, and so having desktop class Safari allows you to go to some of your favorite applications that you would wanna use and use those web browser versions of them. And then the number one key to also having the Safari is now you can also download anything from Safari right into your files folder on your iPad Pro. So since Safari allows you to download things straight to your files app on your iPad Pro, just like you could on any Mac, then I think that also makes that the number one application that you're gonna need. Going right into the next application, that would be the Files app. Now, it is definitely not the best file management system that you could possibly have, but whether you're using the iCloud Drive or just saving things to your iPad itself, the file management system has gotten much better over the last couple years. And with iPad OS 14, they've even changed the look up just a tad bit. So you can import files from your external drives. You can import files from downloading them from Safari or anything else for that matter. And you can and use that as a local storage mechanism. Now with that new file management layout and the way that you can integrate everything that I've talked about before with having external drives, that makes it even more like a laptop replacement. 
And the third and final app that I'm gonna talk about right now is an app called Shift Screen. So if you're a person that you are on the go all the time and you're doing your laptop type work, then that's great. But when you come home to your office or if you're in an office setting and you wanna get more real estate with your iPad Pro, Shift Screen is the application that allows you to use any external monitor and you can have that full screen real estate. I know for myself, I have an ultra wide monitor. And so if I wanted to do anything on the web browsing platform, that I wanted to go on there maybe do like a Google Doc or maybe even use the Microsoft Suite on there or even if I wanted to watch a YouTube video full screen I can do all of those things right from shift screen it is integrated with a lot of applications such as some of your favorite productivity apps but the best thing that you can do with your iPad Pro is that you can plug it up to your external monitor and being able to use it in a full screen capacity like you would a laptop as of right now this application is the only application that I'm talking about that's a paid application and it's only five dollars and a developer of this application has went through many 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 updates and continues to update the application frequently so i think it is the best bang for the buck as we are talking about having an application that makes your ipad pro more like a laptop some of my wild card applications also that i can go into further detail on or you can also check out a video that i did on content creation on the ipad but some of those applications include pdf expert for doing details with PDF and being able to sign PDF documents. Spark is my email application. LumaFusion is how I edit my videos. MindNode for taking down notes in my head and trying to get me more of a brainstorming look. Lightroom for editing photos and Affinity Photo for editing photos and thumbnails as well. Now, like I said, the card is in the description above or the description below so you can check out the video I do with iPad Pro content creation. And before we jump into the third category today, question for you is what is your favorite application and accessory for your iPad Pro? Let me know in the comments below. And the third and final category for my tips for turning your iPad Pro into a laptop is the workflow. Now the workflow is pulling everything together between your accessories and your applications. And now you're starting to create that workflow that makes this feel more like a laptop. My favorite thing to do on the iPad Pro now, especially using iPad OS 14, is using the Spotlight Search. Now in the past, using Spotlight would take over the entire screen, but now it just pops up in a nice little Spotlight Search at the very top of the screen. And you can still see the application that you're currently in, but I typically use this so I don't have to go back to the home screen, find other applications or files, I can just hit command space and search for that application or that file or anything that I'm looking for and I can find it right there and I can just click enter and I can jump to my next application or jump to that file itself. Next will be the use of widgets. Now, while I would love for iPadOS 14 to be like iOS 14 and being able to have those widgets all over your screen as you can on the iPhone, now you can still have a better layout with your widgets and having some of those productivity things or maybe even some of your timers or even a stack that allows you to see things more frequently on your home page as a widget. Now, maybe in the future, we can move those widgets around, but using widgets allows me to put some of my reminders, maybe the weather, maybe my photos or something that I would need access to right there on that home screen that I can kind of see from a glance. And if I need to scroll up and down on that and click on any of those things, I can. Next would be shortcuts. Now, shortcuts is a way to automate things on the iPad Pro. And I've started using some of these more and more as I've used my iPad, but this gives the iPad an advantage as I have not ever used a shortcut in a way on a MacBook. So now between my phone and my iPad, I am able to do certain shortcuts that allow me to take me straight to places and that even cuts down how much I even use my search bar. I have a shortcut right here for using Twitter, if I just click on this shortcut, it takes me straight to Twitter, or I even have shortcuts for making notes or switching from my AirPods and other audio device. And there are a couple creators that used iPad Pro shortcuts and are very good at it. And so I will link some of those down below and it helps you with the workflow of your iPad Pro for turning it into an iPad. And last but not least is the gestures and the commands. Now, if you hold down the command key on the iPad Pro on the home screen or on any application that it has commands, 
stands for, you can see all of the commands that the iPad has, which makes your workflow much faster. Also with having that Apple Magic Keyboard or a keyboard that has a trackpad on it, you can see the gestures that you can do with having that keyboard case with the trackpad. I know that you can use three finger, two finger gestures, swiping over, swiping up, swiping down, and those things allow you to have a much better and easier workflow. So check out some of those gestures and commands just by hitting that command key or going into your menu and seeing the gestures for the trackpad itself. So those are my favorite tips for how you can turn your iPad Pro into your everyday computing device here in 2020 and beyond using iPad OS 14. Also recently I did a collaboration with some of my favorite iPad creators and we did an iPad Pro desk setup video. So if you're interested in how we have been using our iPad Pros on our desk and you can check out that video right here as well or in the link in the description below. Now, if this is your first time plugging into the channel, make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you know when the next video is coming out. But that's all I have for today. Thanks for plugging in and I can't wait to see you in the next video. But until next time, I'll catch y'all later. Peace.